What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Integrated Graphics versus Half-Life 2. Today we've decided to continue with AMD processors and in particular this APU here. This is the A6 9500 and it's time to see how well it will play the game. So the Athlon A6 9500 is an APU that was released by AMD. It's a much newer processor than the ones that we've previously looked at. In particular, it runs on the AM4 platform. And there's about four or five different versions of these, and this one is actually one of the lowest. It is a two core, two thread processor with a Radeon R5 graphics. It also has a base clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz. Now it's not the first time that we've seen this on the channel. We've actually built a few budget systems in the past particularly during the GPU crisis, because the only option many people had was APUs. And to be honest, it's not a very good one. I also did a little bit of research before we did this video and took a look at what other reviewers were saying. One of the videos that I stumbled upon was one from Timmy Joe Tech, and he actually took a look at the bigger brother to this, the quad core version, and pretty much had a really good analysis. The analysis was, why would AMD even create this? What purpose does it solve? Because as a CPU, it's not that good at all. And as an APU, you're not really gonna get that much out of it. So I suppose it's probably just for those kind of office PCs as a cheap alternative to a Ryzen processor. I say cheap, they're actually not that much cheaper than just going for a standard first gen Ryzen processor. So if you are looking to get one of these, you will simply only be getting it for the APU side. Now obviously being an AM4 CPU and being supported by most of the motherboards unless you've actually had an update to your BIOS and it actually takes the support out of these, they are actually really good for using to do that, to update your BIOS. And I've heard of a lot of people actually getting sent these by AMD back during the 300 series motherboard updates so that they could support other, more newer processors. But generally that's pretty much all they're good for. But you didn't come here to hear about this processor, you can look at any of our previous videos on it. What you came here to do was see how well it would play Half-Life 2 without a graphics card. So let's get it slapped into a motherboard and see how well it performs. Okay, so we're in game with this CPU now and it's actually not looking too bad. We've got a constant 60 FPS and that is probably because our V-Sync is turned on. So if we head to the settings, video, we are currently running in 1080p. We'll go to advanced. Yes, yeah, so we've got vertical sync turned on. We'll turn that off and all the other settings are set to high as per all the other APUs and things that we've tested before. We'll just do a bit of a refresh on this and it's going to reload. Okay, and we'll get back to the game. Reset our stats and it's not looking bad at all. We've currently got a 120 frames per second and our percent lows are looking pretty good. But we'll have a bit more of a play of the game and we'll go through some of it. We'll get into some more action and see if we can actually dip that down. It's actually looking pretty impressive already. We are now averaging around 146 FPS, but we are in a tunnel, so we'll get back out in the open and we'll see how different things change once we get into a bit of action. It slightly took a bit of a dip there, but it's actually quite an impressive gameplay. If you were somebody that has never played this game and you want to just have a cheap method for being able to do it, on a more modern platform than something old, this processor, or APU, is actually something worth really getting playing it perfectly fine in high settings. In actual fact, we're getting quite a high frames per second count. If we were to lower the settings, we would get a lot more, obviously. But at the same time, we would also be able to probably take this up a little bit in resolution. I'm not sure how this would actually perform in something like uh, 1440p, but it would be interesting to see how it would perform in 1440p. One thing that we'll need to do is obviously we're going to have to get a new monitor to be able to do that and it's something that we've been looking at for a while but it would give us some more better tests for a lot of the higher end APUs because considering this one plays like this something like a Ryzen APU is going to actually have no problem at all playing this. So I think going forward we'll probably make our tests on a little bit of more older kind of things. Something will continue down the Intel kind of range but but now this processor is actually playing pretty well. You're going to get a great experience in this game, which means you're going to be able to play the old one too. And to be honest, for the processor, you can pick these up for so, such a little price that you could actually play Half-Life 2 through. 
really well on something just like this. As you can see from that gameplay test, it is more than enough to be able to play Half-Life 2. In fact, we had such a great performance at 1080p high settings. We're pretty much thinking that to go any higher than this, specifically some of the more Ryzen APUs, we're going to have to change some of our settings up. So I think going forward, we'll probably look at something either older or we're going to start looking at the Intel side. Maybe we'll get something that is a bit newer from Intel, maybe a Celeron processor. Let us know in the comments below if you have any recommendations. But obviously, to be able to hit our leaderboard, it needs to be tested in Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. Now running that test we had a very similar experience. It started rocky to begin with but then that test is a little bit more demanding than Half-Life 2 the base game but we did manage to get an average of just over 94 frames per second and the gameplay was actually pretty smooth. So if you are looking to just play Half-Life 2 and you want some kind of low-end cheap system to be able to get running this APU would actually be a great purchase. All you need to do is find a cheap enough motherboard and DDR4 now is actually getting super cheap so you can build something pretty good. 94 frames per second though in Half-Life 2 Lost Coast obviously allows this APU to take the crane. On our website and on our leaderboards it is now the highest powerful one that we've tested which is going to get the best results. But let us know what you think of this little APU. Do you have one? Are you playing games on it? What is your experience like? As I said before, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this anymore. I would be looking at probably a first gen Ryzen because they are far more superior when it comes to power. And obviously putting in a discrete graphics card. Graphics cards prices are coming down now, so we don't really need to look at these kind of options unless we're trying to build something that's super small, like a little console build or something like that. They would actually be quite useful for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. And also drop us a like on this video so that we know to do more. And we'll catch you in the next one.